What's up guys, welcome back to Gabriel Aguiar Prod and today we got something hot, we got a fire tornado. I brought back surveys to my Patreon page and this was what the patrons voted the most. And I'm gonna try my best to explain you how you can achieve something like this, it's a little bit hard, but I hope you enjoy it. And if you wanna get your hands on this project, and many other assets that you can use in your games. It's all available in my Patreon page, links below. Alright, so let's see how we can do this. And by the way, I'm using Unity 2020.3.19 with the Universal Render Pipeline, but later on I'm gonna show you a nice trick with the Unity 2021.2. Just make sure you have in the Package Manager Shader Graph and Visual Effect Graph installed, and in Edit in Preference, you have experimental operator slash blocks turned on in visual effects. Right, so this is what we are going to do. As you can see, we need a mesh. So I use this Blender and I'm going to show you how you can do it. I'm using Blender 2.93 and the idea is to erase everything, select with A, delete and with Shift A we want to start with a cylinder. Down here in this Add Cylinder panel you can control the vertex. I'm gonna leave it at 32. Right, so you can press spacebar and search for shade smooth, so we don't see the faces. Now I'm already going to take care of the UVs, I'm going to drag a new window and select the UV editor. And press tab to enter in edit mode. We have these two faces that we want to remove. With control tab I'm going to select face, select them and delete them. Now to fix the UVs it's very simple, we go up here to UV and turn on constraint to image bounds. Now you can select this bottom vertex with B, press G and lock it in the Y and push it all the way down. The UVs are done. I'm gonna press 1 and numpad to go to the front view and push all of this up with G, lock it in the Z, 1 unit. With Ctrl tab I'm gonna switch to vertex, press Z to see through and select the top vertex and push all of these 9 units up, lock it in the Z again and from there with Ctrl R I'm gonna add 3 edge loops. I'm gonna select the bottom vertex, scale it to more or less this size, as well as the top vertex, but not so much. Vertex from the center, I'm gonna scale it down. And now I'm gonna add with Ctrl R a few more edge loops and make it smoother. This obviously depends on how heavy you want your mesh to be. I'm going to add a few edge loops. Yeah, so, so we can have this nice shape. It's really up to you guys to make it however you like it. This is the part where you take care of the shape of your tornado. Let's rename it to Tornado Body 01 or 02. And let's add another mesh, a sander, 32. The procedure is the same. Delete the faces. But this time we only need one edge loop in the middle. Scale it down in the Z. We are basically creating a ring. Scale it all the way up until it has more or less the same size as of the tornado. Add two more edge loops with Ctrl R. You kind of need to create this shape. Once you are done, you can smooth this out with Shade Smooth. What matters is that you rename it to Tornado Ring 02 and you take care of the UV maps. It's very important as well. The UVs must be like this. Once you get it right, you can save this with Ctrl S directly to your Unity project, no problem, if you are using Blender. It will import as an FPX and now, and now we can drag our tornado model to the scene. Right, I'm just gonna add the ring down here and we can start working on the shader. It's a very important part for this effect to work out. You can start with a blank shader graph. Rename it, double click to open it up. And first thing we can do is add Universal as the target and Visual Effect as well. In later versions you don't need to add Visual Effect, you can simply turn on Support VFX Graph. Make sure it's unlit, we don't need lights for this. Turn on Alpha Clip for Universal and Visual Effect targets. And first thing we need out of the box is a color. To control the whole color of the tornado, 
We also need a float for the dissolve, but it's going to be a slider from 0 and 1. Oh, and by the way, rename the reference dissolve underscore color underscore. Choose white and change the mode to HDR. Now we can start. So the dissolve will work in the following way. We can connect it to the alpha and then if we search with spacebar for simple noise, well first we can control the scale, so let's create a property for that, a float noise scale. Rename the reference, 20 for the default value. And this we can connect it to the alpha clip threshold and to the base color. If you save this shader, create a material out of it and drag the material to alternate the mesh, you don't see nothing because the solve is at zero, we need to invert it but it's dissolving away. And that's also very important for our Stylizer Tornado. Let's invert the dissolve with a remap node. Basically, the zeros that come in will be ones, and the ones that come in will be zeros. We are inverting this, connected to the alpha. Now, the very important part, we need to animate this, and instead of simply scrolling, let's use a radial shear. It creates a very interesting effect, especially for a tornado. You can control the strength right here. I'm gonna leave it at 5. But to animate this, we need the time variable multiplied with a vector 2, which is going to be called the noise speed. Rename the reference, default value of 0 0.5 in the Y. And connect the multiply to the offset. And here we go, we got a very interesting effect going on. If you save it, you can just start seeing something interesting. We are going to adjust those values in VFX graph. This mesh is just to see the shader in action. But as you can see, it's very static still, it's predictable. So we need another noise. We can copy this simple noise, say the scale is 20. But Instead of a radial share, we are going to use something crazy, which is a twirl. Love it. Creates some very interesting effects. And we have a few parameters that we want to control. First is a vector 2 for the twirl center. Then a float for the twirl amount. And then another vector 2 for the twirl speed. Let's rename the reference of the twirl speed 0 0.5 for the y. Trail center must have a default value of 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 for now. And the twirl amount, let's add it to so we can see something in action. Let's connect it to the respective inputs of the twirl. Twirl amount goes to the strength. Twirl speed, well, first we need to multiply it with the time. And then we can connect to the offset. And twirl center to the center. And as you can see, we have two noises being very well animated. In an interesting way, we need to put them together. We do it by multiplying it with each other. And then we can connect this to a power node to control how much we want this to be visible. So it's important to create a property for that. We can call it the noise power. I'm going to push it up here. A float, by the way, yeah. Don't forget to rename the noise power. Default value of 1 should be enough. All right. Lastly, all of this is going to be multiplied with the color property we created in the beginning, connected to the base color and to the alpha clip threshold. Save it. The interesting part now is the twirl amount, if we set it to 8 and then set the twirl center, the y value to minus 0 0.5, here we go, we have the tornado effect. But there is a problem, mistake that I made. If we change the color and increase the intensity, it dissolves away. And that's because we cannot connect the color to the alpha clip threshold. We must connect the power simply. Otherwise, it will also dissolve. And here we go. We can play with the intensity and with all of these values. It doesn't really matter because we are going to play with them in VFX graph. So let's move on to that part. With right click in a folder, let's create a VFX graph. We are going to see how to animate this and how to use this in a much more interesting way. Rename the VFX graph and drag and drop it to your scene. 
open with the edit button, rearrange your workspace however you like it. Now, let's get funky with this. So down here we don't want a quad, we want a mesh for the tornado car, which is going to have a dual color. We want a single burst up here of only one particle. We don't want this to move, delete the set velocity. Set lifetime random off. This is an important property to control in the inspector. Let's create a float and call it duration. I'm gonna leave it at 5. Now, down here we can go ahead and increase the size of this with the set size, set it to 1. And yeah, let's switch it to the tornado mesh. And as you can see, it's sideways. An easy fix up here in the initialized particle with a set angle. In the X we can set it to minus 90. Looking good. And this is the part where we combine shader graph with VFX graph to create astonishing effects by assigning the shader we created. Let's make sure the blend mode is opaque, by the way. Alright, so we want to increase the dissolve to around 0 0.6 and the noise scale to 20. Noise power at 1 for a little bit more darkness. And let's twist this with the twirl amount to 8. Now it's important to control the twirl center so it gives a proper twist to this 0 0.5 for the x and minus 0 0.5 for the y. And we get this nice twisted motion. Twirl speed, you can also fix it minus 1 in x and minus 0 0.5 in the y. And would you look at that? It has already the motion in action. Now we can play with the color. So let's create a tornado car color. Connect to the color and we don't want this to be very strong. This is the center of the tornado because this tornado effect is composed of several layers. And this is the first one, the car. We want an orange, not too bright. We still want to see some dark values in it. Right, personally I think it's too stretched in the Y so I'm going to use the set scale 0 0.75 for the Z, I'm going to control this in the inspector later on, so I'm going to create a vector tree and call it scale. Connect it down here, but what's important now is that we animate the motion of this tornado. So down here we are going to use a set scale, and now if you want three animation curves to have more control over how you animate it. One it's going to be for the scale over life x, the other for the Y and the other for the Z. Connect them respectively. Oh, let's set this to multiply the set scale, by the way. Otherwise it will overwrite any previous value. And for the curve, we want to add a key more or less around 0 0.2, push the first one all the way down, make this one a little bit flatter and then we can animate this however we want. I'm gonna make it bounce in the beginning a little bit like this. I'm going to save this curve in this cog, create a new curve, so I can assign this curve to the Y and to the Z. The same curve. And here we go. It grows up and then it bounces a little bit. It's an interesting motion. You can play with this. I suggest that you play with this. It's very interesting. But let's move on because this is a big tutorial. So as you can see towards the end, it simply disappears and we don't want that. We can simply dissolve it away. So let's first create a float for the tornado car dissolve with the same dissolve amount 0 0.61 but we are going to use a curve to control this. And it's done thanks to the sample curve where we can create an animation curve to control it in the inspector. For the dissolve curve which is going to control a lot of layers push it up here. The curve it's very simple it's the first one and towards the end around 0 0.8 we create a key so we can push the last key above 1.5. Just make sure it's flat. Connect it to the sample curve. And for the time, we have the age of the particle, which goes from 0 to 1 and it's perfect to animate this curve. Now we simply need to multiply this with our tornado core dissolve amount. And then connect it to the dissolve. And towards the end, this happens. It dissolves away, which is awesome. Right, so our first layer is done, which is the core. Let's create a group of this, select everything, right click, so we can duplicate it for the tornado layer 1. Let's create another color 
for the tornado layer 1 color and another float for the tornado layer 1 dissolve amount. The dissolve can be 0 0.84 and for the color, I'm gonna select pretty much the same color but a little bit more reddish and a little bit more intense so it becomes brighter. Replace the color and replace the dissolve float. Let me just rename this. We simply need now to increase the size of this one by opening the scale, multiplying the x with 1.15 for example, as well as the y and the z we can leave it as it is. And here we go, as you can see we have an outer layer, the layer 1, which is brighter than the core. And it's all a matter of adding more layers, which I'm going to leave it to you so I can show you how you can do the top and the bottom rings. By the way, make sure in Blender you select this mesh and you press Ctrl A to apply the scale. And then press Ctrl S to save this. If you have your Blender file in Unity, it will apply it automatically. And now we simply need to copy the Tornado Layer 1 particle system up here for the Tornado Top Ring 01. And it consists of changing the mesh to the ring we created. And as you can see, it's on the ground. And it also has a lot of subdivisions, and that's because of the twirl. We can decrease it to 0 0.5, the twirl amount, and it will look much better. Now, to set this to the right position, which is at the top of the tornado, we can use a set position node. For example, we can offset the Y to 8, basically until it covers the top part of our tornado. And it's also a little bit too big, so in the set scale, we don't need to multiply it. We can simply connect it directly to the set scale like this, and that's it. Looking pretty good, but the top ring needs to follow the tornado as it grows. So what we can do is go get the scale over life Y animation curve, sample this curve, animate it throughout the edge of the particle, and multiply this with a vector tree which we are going to create and we are going to call it the top ring position with the same values that we have here, which is 0, 8, 0. And then multiply this with a sample curve and connect it to the set position. What will happen is that the top ring now will follow the tornado. And that's awesome, because from here now you can add a few more layers, like one that is brighter. You can add black layers, it adds a really nice touch. And the same thing happens when you want to do the bottom rings. You don't even need to offset them with the set position. You simply need to add layers until you arrive to something that you like. And that's how you create a stylizer tornado in Unity. So with Unity 2021.2, the nice trick is related to the vertex offset, which is now possible in VFX Graph. As you can see, our tornado is wobbling around. And this is possible thanks to the vertex offset that I created in the shader. There's a link somewhere so you can learn more about it. And then in VFX Graph, I simply control the parameters of the wobble. And in the end, we get this nice motion of the tornado. It adds a really nice touch and it's totally worth it, but it's only possible in 2021.2 because before that, VFX Graph cannot handle vertex offset. I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you want to support me, it will be super appreciated and you can get access to a lot of assets, really a lot, that you can use in your games. Links in the description. And a big thank you goes to each patrons that supports me each month. And a mega thank you to the top tier patrons, which are Alak Frost, Bradford Airman, David Crew, David Maid Lars, Derek Benson, Donald Thompson, Edward Chai, Goblin Plague, Josh McCarbick, Jules Klein, Karsten Mikulka, Lakim Fung, Little Tsai, Maxim, Mograf Tech, Nat Sims, Oitsk, OV Sands, Player Mon Space, Radioactive Bullfrog, Revenant Games, Roger Powers, Ryan, Stefan, Stefan Zarkov, Unknown Enigma, Variasuta, Vivek Sharma, Zared Redding, and Ingo Das. Really, really appreciate your support, guys. It really helps me keep going. And to everyone who watched this, I hope you have enjoyed. Thanks for watching and I also hope to see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye.